first what I'll do is I'll interview I'll introduce you first okay. and ask you to identify the two ladies. Okay. And then we'll get into it. Okay. okay. Wonderful. Second round, the first correction, this is the second game of the Rochester Regional Women's Soccer Playoffs. This game is between SUNY New Paltz and Amherst College. With us is head coach Mike Eckberg of SUNY New Paltz. Coach, can you identify the players who are with you? Uh, this is Rachel Eisert, a senior captain, and Maddie Franklin, a senior captain with me. Do you have some general comments about the game? I think that it was a level of pressure that Amherst did a very good job with. And I commend our student athletes. I thought we did a very good job growing into the game and survived that pressure in certain moments. And, you know, certainly tried to weather the storm to be able to create opportunities for us in transition. It's certainly a testament to, to Amherst as a program. <laughs> Um, but a greater testament for our student athletes to be able to put up a fight like they did and to try to create magic. At the start of the second half, there was a pretty good flurry of shots at both ends, but especially on your end. Did you make any adjustments at halftime? Uh, we switched uh, one of our outside backs. So we felt like it was giving us a little bit more in their individual battles uh, and then really just tried to tuck in I, thought, I felt like it was a, a midfield battle that we weren't winning as much in the first half. Um, <clears throat> but I thought Maddie did a really great job, uh, particularly in one uh, back post service that she hung on to really well. So really just uh, for us trying to get one of our forwards to tuck in to help more of a, a box midfield. Did you get to a point where you felt, yes, we're going to break the winning line? Uh, I felt like a, a group like Amherst doesn't really make many mistakes, but I thought with, with our level of pressure and any time that we could get the ball um, in the attacking half, uh, you know, we have a really dynamic uh, front group, front group of five forwards that all have different tangible and intangible uh, skill set. So I thought whether it was Paris Burke, Gabby Treble, Kennedy Jones, Brooke Keller, um, Abby Dolge, you know, I thought one of them was going to try to break through. Rachel had a really good moment. Uh, that they're keeping made a good save on. So I did have a belief that that we were going to break through when it was zero zero. Right. Matty, was there anything that they did in front of you that caused you any worry? I guess maybe is the right word. Um, I think anytime I had any worry, I knew my defenders were going to be there to back me up. I feel like anytime I start to fill with worry or like anxiety about what may happen next, I'm just reassured because we have a fantastic back line and I just know they'll have my back through it all. And offensively, what about? Yeah, I mean, Emmerich is, like Coach said, they don't really make many mistakes. So, you know, when a bad touch happens or there's a floating ball, you have to be able to capitalize on that. And I thought we did a good job of winning, you know, first and second balls in the midfield, but then Getting forward, I think we could have been a, a little bit more creative, but all in all, I really couldn't be more proud of this team. This isn't somewhere we've been before, and we walked in like we, we've we been here a hundred times. So, With the SUNYAC title, 15 wins in an NCAA appearance, what is the student boost program for next year and in the future? I think it's, it's, a, it's a level of belief that grows and compounds going into you know, our returning group, we're certainly going to miss uh, an unbelievable senior class. But I think this experience and, and you know, to, to win the title against Cortland is something that, you know, this group hasn't done. And so I think when, when you break through and you, you, you set new records, you recognize that your ceiling's a lot higher than, it, than what it really is. Um, like, talk about how special this senior class is Yeah, I think they came in with, I still remember 
one of our very first practices, Rachel as a first year and a senior captain coming over to me and just recognizing how good a freshman forward was. Um, you know, adding, adding Maddie when we did and Gabby Treble, you know, I, it's the talent was was not there when 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 they came in and, and they just they brought a level of of new ideas, creativity, tactical, technical, everything and and they just grew their craft over the course of their careers to to what it is today and I couldn't be more proud of them to be able to to hoist the Suniac championship and and you know to be on this stage and, and certainly one that I think our returners again are gonna grow from it and learn from it and, and recognize what you know, wh where we need to get to as a program to keep moving forward. Rachel, Maddie, I know last year you were dissatisfied with the way that the, you made a goal for each other and for yourselves about getting to a certain place. I know it just happened, but uh, how special was this run for you guys in your final years in a story career for both of you? I feel like <clears throat> it's easy to look at it and say that winning the Suniacs and making it here was our goal, and obviously it was, but we had a lot of little goals that we had to accomplish every step of the way, and I feel like those um, were like our biggest accomplishments, like spending time together, like making sure we all had a fundamental belief in each other and in ourselves so we can make it as far as we did, and I feel like that's something that we can really hold our head up high about. Yeah, I don't know if unsatisfied was the word last year, but more unfulfilled as a team because we knew there was more for us and knew there was a level that we hadn't tapped into yet. And I think we took the spring season and we took a, a week team trip in a foreign country and, you know, we built new connections and we built something so special that we carried into August and it continued to build for three months straight. And it was probably the coolest thing to see. Every single day, every single player was bought in to every practice, and that comes from each other, and that also comes from a coaching staff who makes you believe in what we want to do here. And I just, you, you can't ask for anything more from a team. So. And Mike, about these two leaders, <laughs> like beyond the talent that they bring, like what, how pivotal is their leadership in the success of this program? They made a lot of sacrifices, you know, and I think that's what uh, it's a testament to what a leader needs to do. You know, they put away and put some of their relationships aside to know that, you know, high performance feedback is something that we're really big on. And, and in those moments, you have to be critical. And that might be critical with your teammates that you care about most. And, and they've, they've kept a 10,000 foot view the entire time. And I think that was really for them they catapulted our leadership to, to new levels and really set a different stage. And on the back side of it, relationally, they just, they had so much trust from their peers because of who they are as people. You know, they might bark at them at practice, but they know that they're, they're the first one to go grab Starbucks with them after. And I just think that to have that, that component on both sides, you know, being cutthroat on the field is a different relationship than off the field, and they did both. Thank you very much, Coach, ladies. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very Thank much. You. Thank you. Thank you.